Senior Litigation Counsel at the New Civil Liberties Alliance. Harriet Hageman joins us. And I'm so glad to spend some time with you today, Ms. Hageman. Thank you very much for discussing this with us. It's, it's not, I don't think it's getting the attention it's due. This is not really political. It's common sense, and it seems to cut across party lines, does it not? Good morning. Well, good morning, and thank you for having me, Chris. And I would definitely agree with you because I think it will affect a lot of women and girls as we go forward in a variety of venues. And you pointed out one, which is uh, dealing with sports, but it, it isn't just limited to that. So I do think it's an important issue, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. The executive order that Biden issued... Uh, can can we dive a little deeper into it? Because there's been so many. I think we get lost in the flurry of them. This is but one. Can you talk a little more specifically about it for those of us that might have missed the details and the particulars? You bet. It was one of the very first executive orders that President Biden issued. It's dated January 20th, which was the day that he took office. Its title is Executive Order on Preventing and Combating Discrimination on the Basis of Gender, gender Identity or Sexual Orientation. And what it does is um, executive orders don't have the force and effect of law in and of themselves. But what they do is they direct the federal agencies to take certain actions. This one requires that the head of each agency shall, as soon as practical, uh, consider whether to revise, suspend, or rescind such agencies agency actions or promulgate new agency actions as necessary to fully implement statutes that prohibit sex discrimination and the policy set forth in, in this particular uh, executive order. It basically is going to erase the differences or attempts to erase the differences between men and women and boys and girls. And we all know that there are biological differences between men and women and boys and girls, regardless of, of, of what an executive order may say. I would argue that the very foundation of this executive order is flawed because it relies on the Bostock decision that was issued by the United States Supreme Court a couple of years ago. And in that case, uh, Justice Gorsuch specifically stated that it does not necessarily apply to these types of things. He said that uh, it only applied in the Title VII context. It does not apply or does not, uh, it's not intended to apply in the Title IX context, which is what we're talking about. Harriet Hageman with us from the New Civil Liberties Alliance. This is uh, an interesting thing because uh, fr from an activist point of view, I mean, I know you're here to look at it through the legal prism, not necessarily political. I'm always interested to see who kind of legally, or I should say politically lines up on the outside of it, pushing it or, or opposing it. And it, it seems to me that I look at, uh, for instance, the issue of... Uh, Gay marriage will often get lumped into this subject matter. And I, a lot of people that I talk to who have advocated for gay marriage over the years, they, they don't want anything to do with this issue. They, it, it, they, find, they find it sort of um, objectively uh, offensive and an affront to their cause as well. They don't, this, um, mm -hmm. this kind of tearing down of, uh, of, of gender roles at all is, is sort of an affront to the gay community as well, which is another component that a lot of people don't talk about, but it's just true. I, I agree with you. I, I agree. It definitely crosses a lot of party lines. And I think one of the questions many people ask, which is kind of what I'm hearing in your voice, is why are we doing this? What is the purpose of this? What, who, is, who is pushing this agenda and why? Because, again, I'm going to go back to what I said at the very beginning, using your terminology, which is common sense, which is there are biological differences between boys and girls and men and women. And simply naming something something doesn't make it that something. Uh, it, 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 it won't change those biological differences. And from the standpoint of a woman, I take great offense at this because I look at these efforts at literally erasing women and erasing the strides that we have made since Title IX was adopted in 1972. Title IX is a very simple statute. It just simply states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in or be denied the benefits of or be subject to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. That's it. That's the sum total of it. 
And the intent was to make sure that girls had an equal opportunity as boys in all of the programs that uh, were available at the time and that have been created since that time, such as in athletics, such as in participating in education programs that might have been traditionally male. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense. We've got an agenda out there that one of the very first actions that the President of the United States took was to, in my opinion, take an act that will, will ultimately, ultimately erase many of the strides that women and girls have made over the years. What could this do, Ms. Hegeman, to houses of worship? Um, does this have implications to religious freedoms? This has implications for religious freedoms, for employment opportunities, for a variety of things. Uh, again, what this does and what the Equality Act does, which we won't be talking about today, but it is something that, that Congress just passed this week, it makes it illegal to discriminate based upon your strongly held religious beliefs. So if you do believe, as I do, that God created women and God created men for a purpose, and that is something that you preach or something that you push forward or something that you, that, that you advocate for, you could actually potentially be sued for discrimination. So again, it is a very strange uh, kind of sledgehammer approach to a very complicated issue and a very high button social issue that this administration has has de has deigned to, to go forward with with I don't think hearing all of the voices on all of the sides as to why this could be such a dangerous and damaging uh, action for all of our agencies because again what this executive order does is tell all of the agencies that this is how they must approach things from now on out so whether it's the Department of Ag or Department of Labor or or, or the Department of Transportation they have to look at everything through this general gender neutral eye in terms of their programs their funding their grants uh, and how they approach enforcement actions and all kinds of things yeah and the, the, the sports aspect kind of gets the most attention um, because I think it's the most obvious and clear uh, particularly when you talk about collegiate athletics although it applies to high schools as well and as it was explained to me, it, it hasn't really, I don't know that it's presented itself yet, to my knowledge. I think there have been some court cases, but I don't know. Let's walk through a hypothetical. Uh, someone shows up this fall, assuming schools return to normal. Someone, a, a male, a former male shows up this fall and wants to compete now as a girl uh, on a girl's um, sports team at a high school. That high school, that school district is what? Now, must, must be compelled to allow that former male... Who now identifies as a female to compete? Is that is that a law per the executive order, or where are we with this? Well, it would be the Department of Education that would actually fund that because all of our schools, the vast majority of our schools, even private schools, will receive federal funding. So it isn't just limited to public schools, but yes, that's exactly what this executive order would do because under Title IX and the way that this executive order has been written is you cannot discriminate on the basis of sex. They've equated sex to transgenderism. They, what they've done with this executive order is that if you are a boy and you think you are a girl, you're able to compete on the girls basketball team or track team or volleyball team but even worse from the standpoint of girls and women is that that boy can then also go into the locker room the girls locker room the girls shower and use the girls bathrooms and if they go on overnight trips that boy is not only allowed to but they are mandated to allow that boy to sleep in rooms with girls so it, it goes well beyond even just competing in sports, which we all agree. And again, being a, a young woman who was one of the very first beneficiaries of Title IX, I, I entered junior high in 1975, soon after Title IX was enacted, and was able to get our school to, uh, to, to provide more sports opportunities and education opportunities for girls as a result. So this even goes beyond just saying, okay, well, this boy says he's a girl, therefore he can be on the girls basketball team this says that for all purposes that young man must be treated as a girl including in shower situations bathroom situations and overnight uh, hotel trips so I, I think that there are so many again uh, unanswered questions but also it, just looking at it at its face you have to say what in the world and why has this administration gone this extreme on this issue Harriet Hageman, senior litigation counsel at the uh, 
New Civil Liberties Alliance. I hope we can stay in touch on this issue. I, <laughs> certainly not going away, so I hope we can continue to stay in touch on it. And, and as, as we sort through it, you will be a, a, a clear voice, uh, I hope, and a clear head on it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.